missing for quite a while, so okay. I'll uh I might watch these at home in the garage. I might have one in the truck too. Yeah. There you go. That's the way to do it. See, this one's a little bit smaller. Oh. That'll work. I'm going to bring in the... There we go. So, it's a Saturday and Adam says, hey, are you working in a woodyard today? I said, well, yeah, that's a day. It's every day he gets woodyard work. So he says, hey, I'll come and work for a while. So he's going to run the tractor and take the logs and bring them over to the live deck. And I'm going to run the processor. We're going to see if we can fill a couple trailer loads full. So that's what's going to happen. We got all the prep work done. So time to get cutting.
Alrighty, I thought I would try something a little different and do a little narrative of what's happening. So we're doing some processing here and got a lot of crooked wood and a lot of oversized stuff. I'm just going to show you some things that you have to think about when you're processing. So this piece dropped in, I had to flip it around. Now the next cut, because it was a real arched, crooked, snaky piece, it's going to be a crooked cut. So when this one drops in, you can already see the, the cut is crooked, kind of like a steel chainsaw cut. So look at that. And it tipped up because it slides up on the wedge and um, the push plate doesn't really stop it from moving. So the next one should be better because it should be a straighter cut. But then you see that crooked end, so you turn it down like that. Ooh, look at that. Went through pretty good. So you got to learn to read the wood and everything's a little bit different every single time that you're cutting. So a nice straight piece here. This is a nice size one. This will drop right between the rollers and just stay right there. And that is a perfect size piece of wood so 8 to 10 inch stuff is really nice here I'm at the end of the log so I'm doing a little cookie cut and you dot the tray out and uh, get rid of that and then flip the tray back up I mean the eject uh, door and then drop it in give it a twirl and it won't quite go so I gotta reach in and oh maybe it's gonna go oh it did go and you turn it down so you get the fat end down usually something like that get it to be so it's straight and level now I got a little pencil coming in here these little bitty four or five inches are, they're just hard. You see how much space there is in there? And a lot of times they'll kick out to the left or to the right and they won't hit the center of the wedge. You'll see some of these coming up. And it's, it's really a pain in the butt when that happens. There's a nice, perfect centered one. But that doesn't happen all the time. It's like some of the time. It perfectly centers. There's one going, that's a little bit off. See, and then it kicked out that happens that's how you get a lot of the slivers and chunks and debris this one's probably going to go crooked too i don't remember nope did pretty good pretty much in the middle and sometimes i can reach in there and straighten them out but then there's other times this now i just dropped another log into the trough there while i had the one in there so i can just keep going and then get in there there you go and that one did really oh and it kicked out again see how that how it kicked out like that because there's not you can't really guide it because there's it's not like you're holding it here I'm going to cut a cookie off, so I bring the clamp down to get it so it doesn't drop on me. And then you clamp it, drop your table, drop the eject door, and then it's just going to roll out of there. Sometimes it'll drop right straight down through the bottom of the machine, too. And then you just kick it in and give it a twirl, and there it's caught. So i got to reach in now and get it in the middle, and that piece is in the way. It's always something. You can't just sit there and run the wood unless you got perfect wood. And perfect wood doesn't happen very often um, look at that how it kicked out see because it's got so much room in it with the little pencils like that this one should be a little better I think but this one's got a little crotch coming out of it there so that's gonna be odd so you have to raise the wedge and then you try to center it again sometimes I'm better just cutting these chunks off like this uh, if I could cut it ahead of time I wouldn't you don't want that to be up no well, I didn't twirl it up but Anyway, we'll just let it go. Now I'm going to throw it back in and we're going to just destroy it, I think, if I remember right. So you want that to be up in the air. There you go, right there. There you go. And then I got another split out of it. So yeah, this is a nice size piece right here. I know this might be a 12 inch piece, something like that. 11, I don't know. But that's a nice size. If you can get it to go right between the two rollers, it works out really well. And if Sometimes I'm sitting there a while and I get a piece that's a little big. It's kind of nice to stand up once in a while, throw one back in and resplit it just to get off your butt because sitting there for, you know, 20, 30 minutes gets old and I like to get up and stretch a little bit. So sometimes throwing a piece in just kind of keeps you fresh. Sometimes they do this too. They'll roll in there and you cannot get them to go. Look at, see how it kicked out? So you got to reach in and you got to throw them in the middle. And the pickeroon is a safe way to do it. Sometimes it's just easier with your hands. You try to get in them. Now, right now, I've got the four-way wedge on, for those of you that want to know. And the four-way is the cleanest of the wedges because every time you add a wedge, or two, or ten, or however many you want to add, it'll, uh, whoops, I had that one kind of go crooked on me. Um, so I'm going to back it out. There we go and get it straightened out. But every time you add a wedge, you're going to get more debris. Uh, yeah, you can get some smaller pieces, but you get more debris. So by straightening that out, i got a straighter cut, and it'll split better. So you got to kind of watch that. But nice size pieces right here. Oh, that one, I don't know what happened. I must have did the edit there. But here's a smaller one again. It's going to drop. You'll see their space. But that one's pretty centered, not too bad. Um, anything smaller than this, though, starts to be an issue. And I think this one right here might be a 
six inch piece I don't know something like that didn't measure it sometimes I lift the wedge up like you just saw there in the bottom right hand corner just to clear out some of the um, pieces so it doesn't jam up just to keep them flowing nicely uh, yeah that size piece isn't too bad it might be a seven inch I don't know I don't measure everything you just kind of eyeball it you try to run similar pieces but this load of oak that I got this particular time here was all different sizes from you know 22 inches all the way down to three inches and I know other other people that I've talked to and people leave comments that have firewood businesses that use processors they definitely try as hard as they can to separate their wood out so they're running consistently sized pieces as much as possible didn't have the wedge back far enough so it didn't fall. So notice you can hit, hit the twirlers there, log rollers that you can make them go. Uh, but yeah, you want your pieces to be as consistent as possible. That way you can have the right size wedge on, you can set everything up right, and you just get in a flow when it's all the same size. I just bought some wood that's going to be pretty similar size stuff that's going to be run uh, pretty soon. I, I already got uh, three truckloads in, I got one more to come. Here's a little pencil. That's like a four inch or there, it's a tiny little guy. Um, and some people have mentioned to me too that my bar speed is either, look at that, just shot right out, didn't even get split, nothing. Oh, it just barely caught one of the wings. Um, some people have mentioned to me about um, the bar speed and yeah, you can adjust it. And you want it to be a bolt like it was. So now I'm holding a piece back, and if you guys can see that on the top of the screen there, another piece fell into the trough. So I'm using the clamp to hold it back so I can advance the smaller one. Sometimes you can do that, but sometimes you can't. Sometimes you just kind of rock them back and forth and you get them to come. Because if you got two pieces, you cannot cut two at a time unless they're exactly the right size, same size pieces. Because what will happen is your small piece will catch the, uh, the teeth on the bars that comes down and it'll start tumbling and it bounces all over the place because there's nothing holding it in place. Come on, roll over. Yeah, you got to pull that one out of the way. Like I said, it's not a big deal. It does slow you down. You're less productive. But I tell you, sometimes standing up feels good just to kind of stretch once in a while. Um, as long as it's not too much. Ideally, you'd want to run for like an hour. Just steady. Nothing changes. Just pump them through. Get up, stretch a little bit. And go back at it. There, we're going to drop the tray. And again, that one. There we go. I tumble it. And it just barely got caught on the wedge. That's where that small stuff is just kind of a pain. Yep, now I just shot it in there because it's going to be a little bit big. I'm guessing that's... Oh, am I going to throw it back out? Yeah, I'll throw it back out because it's probably 18 inches. So I'll probably back that one out that's in there and just throw it up on the tray. So, yeah, it's hard to tell on the screen here, too, sizes. It's kind of, kind of a... One of those things, because it's a wide-angle lens, it can be deceiving. Um, but that one probably would, would have been like an 18 or 19-inch piece, so I'm cutting a chunk off here. And the back of the clamp, for those of you that want to know, the back of that three-tooth clamp is 16 inches. So all you got to do is line it up with the back of the clamp, and then it's just the right size, 16 inches. And it's hard to see, so you got to kind of like lean out over the edge to see it sometimes you'll get a little short one like that one was that might have been a 15 incher but i've never yet anybody complain that a piece was 15 or 16 or 17 inches the only thing they complain about is if they're real long they do not want a lot of people do not want 18 19 inches because if they line them up in their garage when they're stacking them uh, it sticks out too much and you got one oddball so you try not to have any long ones that's that's the key a little bit shorter is not a big deal but longer definitely is uh, but if they're if they get down to it, oh look at that! See, it was a crooked cut, and how it shot up there. Oh, I hate when that happens. But that happens a lot because you're cutting stuff that was you know cut by a processor in the woods, and their cuts are crooked sometimes. They'll approach it differently. They'll have a, a, a weird angle on it, or the tree could be growing at a real strong angle. When they cut, they're cutting level, but it ends up being a crooked cut. So there's that, not even see, there. You see, I turned it down. That, that way, it bites better. The one thing I wish is the buttons that are on the ram were sharper, so that the logs wouldn't slide up or down. And I wish they went all the way down into that bottom square piece on the bottom. That's on the inside of the uh, the ram. That little 
tongue that hangs out down there. I wish that had buttons on it or some type of grippers. Here I'm kicking out a piece that was going to be too small because I'm at the end. And then the door sometimes will not, the eject door will not um, come back up. Sometimes a piece of wood will fall in. That's why you want to keep it clean out front. The tumblers work, but sometimes you got to, you know, go back and forth and in and out. And sometimes they just don't work. See there, I'm kind of at the end of the piece. So I'm going to throw those two back in. So sometimes I'll yank one out like that and I'll just reach back, hit the ram, get another split out of it, and then throw it back in. So... There, look at that. And yes, a six-way or an eight-way would be nice, but you do get a lot more trash. And a lot of this wood that we were running here um, was wood that was um, all different sizes. And uh, there's a lot of small stuff in there. And that small stuff is just about useless in a six or an eight-way wedge. It, just, it doesn't hit anything. So I just try to do the best you can with what you got, I guess. Um, I also think the wings on the wedges should be farther forward on the front of the, the main vertical wedge because what happens sometimes it'll hit in the front wedge and it'll shoot out, it'll basically do the splits on you and you don't get any cuts on the other, like right there, see how it did that? It shoots out like that because it's starting to open up and then it hits that and it flares right away, see if it happens again here, you know that time it went through. Yeah these little ones like this will well, happen sometimes. So see if this one does the same thing. And yeah, the bar speed is a little slow for these small ones. See, see how it's flared out there? Now that one on the inside there is going to get the end of it cut off when the next one comes down. So um, yeah, the bar speed is set up kind of for an average. If I have bigger chunks, especially with oak or ash or you know more of a hard or, or hickory hard hardwood, the stuff that's real dense, it will... Um, start jumping on you. It, it doesn't, you can't have it too fast because if it's too fast you can't cut. The bar will push too hard with pressure on the chain and it'll just dig in and then it won't cut. You know, trying to get this one. If you go real slow sometimes. So look at See how that did that? Yeah, it's just so maddening when that happens with those little ones. Because all you're doing is destroying the wood. You're just crushing it. But there's not a lot you can do with the wedges the way they're set up. That I raise the wedge up to try to hit the center on that one. So that's nice. That worked good. Which is, this is a nice size wood. And this one here coming up has got a crotch growing out in the back. I could see there. So I'll probably roll that up. Oh, nope, I didn't. A lot of times I try, oh, I'm just going to throw it back in. A lot of times I'll try to roll it up. And that way it usually goes through better. Right, like that. Yeah, it can't get, there we go. Because otherwise it'll hit that crotch on the wing or something. And it'll tip it so that it doesn't split it. It just kind of shoots out. That's a nice size one right there. Right there. That's a beauty. I should have lowered the wedge a little bit because now I got two big pieces on top. But the little ones on the bottom are just fine the size I want so I just do that once in a while. I have to do resplits on these anyway because my customers don't want real big wood. For the most part my customers are fireplace people. People that burn in their backyard and they do not want big monster wood. They complain about it if it's too big. If you can't pick it up with one hand, it's too big. Because a lot of the people that I sell to, it's the lady of the house that's making the fires. They do not want big pieces. What you see in bundle wood is what they want. Because a lot of people I sell to either used to buy bundle wood or still do occasionally. And that's the size they're accustomed to. And the people I'm selling to aren't burning for an all night burn in a wood boiler. They are burning in their fireplace and they want to see the flames. They want it to actually burn. They don't want just a great big lump of um, chunk of wood, you know, that they can barely lift to get in there. They want to be able to put it in nicely, place it, and watch the flames, not have it just smolder in there. Um, so it's more for enjoyment than anything the people I sell to, like 95% of the people. And some of the people that I sell to that heat with wood have smaller um, fireboxes on their wood stoves. They don't want big pieces. They will specifically tell me nothing, nothing at all over 17 inches. And they don't want real big ones either. They want the splits to be 4 inches or so. That's what they want. Because a lot of the people have high efficiency wood stoves that I'm selling to. They do not have big wood boiler stoves like a lot of people that cut wood and burn wood for themselves. The people I'm selling to have small wood stoves 
and they have fireplaces. That's what's nice. When you got a second guy, you can reach in there and do that. Adam was just loading wood in the deck and he was cleaning up a little bit. So then when you see one go in weird, a lot of times it's nice. You'll hop up and throw them back over. It just saves a little bit of time. But that's a dangerous place to be right there. If you're going to have something explode, that's where it's going to go. Um, here's a little bit smaller one. So yeah, on the wood, uh, the sizes that I'm splitting, uh, I want a variety anywhere from one inch all the way up to four inches. Two to three inches is about ideal. Um, there, I'm just trying to clean out the wedges, raised it and lowered it, so tried to get the center. See how that split out again? It's because of those wings are set too far back, in my opinion. I think they need to be right up front so they all make contact all at the same time. But my guess is there's got to be a reason for it. There's got to be a reason that it's set up that way. Somehow, either in the manufacturing or in the design of the machine, it must have to be that way because that's how a lot of them are. Um, but I think it should be up farther to the front myself. Um, there's a few other things I would do for improvements. One of them would be maybe a narrower uh, opening where the, the ram comes through. So it was literally only about two inches maybe three instead of the six or seven that it is i don't know what it is i never measured it but it's you get those small little pieces and they're just all over the place i'd rather have it sit on the actual rollers than down on that the uh what would you call that like the beam the beam that's on the bottom that the that the ram slides on uh, that plate on the bottom that i think should be narrower or it should be a narrower opening somehow so yeah, that's a nice size piece right there. Now I'm just getting ready for the next one here. Oh no, I got two in there. See how I dropped the, <laughs> I dropped the, uh, the clamp down, and I'm trying to get it so that I can clamp just the one. I'm trying to hold back. That's where if you got one that's a little bigger than the other, you can hold the small one back. See how that one just went right underneath? Too small. And I don't. Yeah, I had the wedge too high. That was part of the problem. So now that'll just get rammed out when the next one comes back. And that stick sticking up on the top of the back, and I watch that shoot out. Oh, it did. Sometimes they'll just shoot right back or up in the air. They fly all over the place. There, I got it down low enough on that one. So you're constantly watching stuff. It's just, there are so many things to watch with the manual splitter. Um, I ran, um, a buddy of mine has a 48C. We did a video uh, this winter. I went to his place. And he's got the joystick with the cab, and it's so much easier to run than the uh, the manual bar operator here station. It just, it's not that this can't be done, it's just a lot harder. There's a lot more to learn. It takes a lot more um, seat time to get, to get fast with it. Um, but it is a lot cheaper, so there's that. Uh, so that's why people will buy it, because you are saving money. But in my opinion, I would just get a 48C if I was going to buy one. It's just a superior machine, I think. It's faster, easier to operate, more comfortable. you got the air conditioning, heat, all that good stuff. So, just keep, keep going. You just keep watching. So, yeah, you got to watch your bar speed. you got to watch the bar oil to make sure that it's oiling properly. It's not too much, not too little. you got to watch the chain to make sure it's not too tight, not too loose. You gotta watch the the pieces if they're crooked, if they're the size of them for when they drop in, if they've got crotches, if they've got branches sticking out, if they've got a crack, because if it's a cracked piece like shattered wood, like a barber chair type thing would do, um, those pieces will fly all all over when you have the bar come down if it's not holding tight. So you get some all kinds of weird stuff. You get pieces stuck up front like I just pulled out there. You gotta watch the door to make sure that it's not getting jammed because that happens in your your uh, table sometimes you'll get wood underneath that you can't drop it down or raise it up um, you got to watch your sawdust to make sure that your bins not full where you're shooting it you got to watch the logs as they're coming off of the live deck into the trough to make sure you're not dropping you know two at a time you got to make sure they're not crossed where you're going to have one do something weird and you got to go out there and you got to push one off or something because Firewood is all different sizes and shapes. It is Unless you're buying bolts or buying perfect wood, you're going to have stuff like that happen because that was a crooked log. So you get a crooked cut, 
So it splits weird and it kind of slides up. So that kind of stuff happens a lot. Um, you're watching the uh, the elevator. Make sure you're not getting a literal, a literal log jam at the bottom of the uh, trough as it goes out to where it goes into the elevator. There's like a, a trough catching place right there. You gotta make sure that there's nothing jammed there because that can jam up. There's little bitty slivers of sticks and things can get caught in the gears and stop your elevator from going up. You gotta watch your behind you. You gotta watch the trailer or where your wood pile is not getting too high because you can have a piece get sucked back in and turn around and go back down the elevator and jam. You gotta make sure the trailer's being moved. So you gotta watch the guy that's loading to signal to him that he's got to move the trailer because he's just keeping you fed most of the time. If you're going, if you're if you're running really good, he can basically just keep up by feeding you just steady. Um, you got to watch the sawdust underneath the whole machine and the debris because it can build up and then cause problems. Uh, you got to watch your cookies and where they're going. Make sure it's not one's not going to shoot out and go into where the guy in the tractor is going to run it over or the skid steer. So. What we do a lot of times, if you look at the top right part of the screen, there's a log laying right there. You put a log there and it won't kick out. And some guys will tell me, you, you, need a, you need a tray there, you need to put a bucket there, you need to put something. Yeah, that would be nice, but I don't have one right now. Someday we'll figure it out. But we're going to cut a little bit more here and then we're going to speed things up. So you can see Adam was off the tractor, so he kept throwing pieces in for me and I'm throwing them. Yeah, and they'll do that sometimes, a piece will stand up on you. That happens even when they come off of the, uh, the cut from the saw. They'll stand up just like that. You can't do a thing because it's just the size that'll do that. Um, but other than that, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very stressful um, running on the machine because there's so much to watch for. But when you get good wood, it's just fun because everything goes really nice. When you get these really nasty ones, like this whole batch here was all different kinds of wood, different sizes, crotchy pieces, small pieces, big pieces, crooked pieces, crotchy ones. I mean, it was just everything. And generally, a lot of people don't realize this. That's what firewood people get, because that's what the loggers will sell you. I'm going to cut a big chunk off of this one. It's got a crotch right there. You can see this one might cut a little hard. It might bounce a little. No, oh, it's cutting through it. You can see that right there, double there. Now, ideally, I'd like to get... Yeah, this is going to cut our split weird. You want to get... Yeah, you want to get that down low, like that right there, and then it should go through. And then we're going to speed things up right now.
oke okay, oke okay. Let's go.